So then we decided to go with an audio cue because regardless of where the child is going to be, they'll always be, they will always be able to hear something. And so there were two kind of separate ideas. Um, the first was a metronome-like idea. So at first, when the child is um, still, there will be a constant um, kind of metronome sound. And so the idea was, as the kid would sway farther and farther from the center, the tempo of the metronome would speed up. And so that was Bonnie's original idea, but the more we thought about it, we were kind of like, when the kid's already focusing on the exercise that they're in the middle of doing, they're not going to be able to differentiate um, between the speeds of the beeps. They'll just hear. They might be able to tell that it's increasing, but ultimately, we decided it would be better if we had just one beep to basically go off as an alarm to indicate that the child has swayed past a certain threshold. Um, and so basically the idea is we'll have to set um, a certain threshold for a certain frequency and as the child passes a, those thresholds, so maybe they move over 10 centimeters and that's our first threshold. When they go past 10 centimeters, then um, the beep will go off. And then once it goes past 20 centimeters, the beep will go off, but it will be higher in frequency. And so the idea is it will be a lot easier for the child to know if they're being still or not, or if they need to um, kind of calm down so that they can uh, reduce the amount of sway that's going on. Um, kind of the future development. So when we were thinking about all these ideas, we had this whole vast scheme of things that we were going to do, but it just wasn't uh, feasible in the amount of time that we had. Um, but I'm hoping to continue working with Mike to kind of flush it out so that I can give Bonnie something that she can actually use in her work environment. Um, so the next step was going to be taking the two devices, uh, the magnetometer and the accelerometer for thrashing, and communicating to a server via Wi-Fi. And so the idea for that is to store the data on a secure website. Um, and basically, uh, any of the therapists ha would have access to this website. And this would be this, the area that we would store the graphical data that I was talking about um, over here. And so that would kind of be the final thing that would kind of complete this whole thing, is that now um, the alarm is good for in the environment, but once we have the data stored, we can actually show it to the parents afterwards. And that was kind of the ultimate goal for the whole thing. And so just a few conclusions. Obviously, um, I learned a whole bunch of new things um, going into a field that I, I knew nothing about. But these were just a few of the direct implications of what uh, finishing my final product meant. And so this first one was very important because learning to coordinate with one more than one person was um, a major factor that kind of delayed this whole uh, schedule. Uh, last year I had talked about that I had made a 10 song album, but really all I had to do with that was I had to bring the people in uh, for once, which actually wasn't that difficult to do because it was uh, one person or two people at most. And so all I had to do was record them and then for the rest of the product I could work on it <clears throat> by myself. And so the problem with this is that in this project kind of as the entire thing was progressing, I had to continue um, communicating with the three different people that I had to work with. <clears throat> and so that was an important skill just to learn how to deal with, or just learning how to um, kind of cut your losses in certain areas, or realizing that maybe you can't meet with everyone, so you just meet with a select group of people that you know you can get um, the product progressed upon. And so that was crucial. And so um, exposure to a variety of disciplines. Um, I mentioned earlier that my topic was multi multidisciplinary engineering because in reality, <clears throat> although I may not have done any kind of high tech advancement or uh, real engineering work, kind of everything that I did encompassed a lot of broad parts of other disciplines, uh, mechanical engineering, for the design of the tunnel, or electrical engineering for the design of my circuit, or computer science um, when I had to learn uh, coding in C++ for um, making the device be able to register um, how far the uh, swing is. And so 
<clears throat> I decided that just really the best title for what I was doing was multidisciplinary engineering. It wasn't just one specific kind of engineering. Um, and the third one was kind of just in general preparation for college. And this kind of ties into the exposure to a variety of disciplines. Um, I'm going off to MIT, and that's one of the uh, largest centers of just uh, innovation in the world for engineering. And so this whole process just kind of helped uh, broaden my scope on this uh, world of technology. And so I feel like now going into this, um, going to MIT, I'm going to be a lot more prepared just um, being familiar with a variety of different things um, that Mike had introduced me to. And so it really just makes me feel a lot more confident going into such a, a highly rigorous environment. Um, <clears throat> and so that's it for my presentation. Uh, I wanted to really thank Mike. He uh, was very patient with me. Obviously, he was trying to teach me stuff that he went to college for. And so just being patient enough to introduce all these different topics and um, pieces of knowledge to me, uh, it, I can't thank him enough. And uh, thank you to everyone else who came out. And thank you to my dad and Coach Goff, who kind of pushed me through this entire process and really motivated me to finish this and do something uh, cool. So yeah, thank you. <laughs>